before this video begins, I would just like to publicly state that this is for a general audience. This can be enjoyed by children and adults alike. Children under the age of 13 can enjoy this video for the Thomas of Friends brand itself. Teens and adults can also enjoy this video for its production value and nostalgia. Thank you, Mainland Studios. There's two, there's four, there's six and eight. Shunting, rolling stock, and holding freight. Red, green, yellow, orange, purple, brown, blue, they're the really useful crew. That's who, all with different roles to play around Tidmouth Sheds and far away. Down Gordon's Hill and around some bends, we got Thomas and his friends. When it comes to steam engines, you'd think that they have a lot of circular features. Circular boiler, dome, funnel, buffers, wheels. Yeah, you know, the usual basic parts of a steam engine. You wouldn't think of any other shape they would have other than some square parts like their cab or their tender. Well, you'd be surprised that if you look closely enough, you would notice that steam engines do have some square-like features. Take Toby, for instance. <laughs> He's all tram and square. We also have Scruff, the vertical boiler engine, and our main character of the story, Neville. <laughs> Neville is a Class Q1 engine. He's gentlemanly, kind, and highly enthusiastic. However, he does have one mild fear of bridges. You're late! Uh, sorry there, mate. Uh, there was a cow on the line. Right. Hey there, you must be Neville. Oh, I am. How'd you guess? Percy told me that you were running late with his guarantee connection. Why is that? Well, you see, I wasn't very truthful. I actually had another problem. Problem? What's that with troubling you? Well, you see, mate, I, uh, I have a little issue with bridges. Oh, well... I have a little issue with hills. I tend to overheat when I... No, no, I mean, like, I, I, I'm I, scared to cross over bridges ever since what happened back in 2005. Neville, from my experience, not all bridges are bad. Just take it from me. Wooden bridges give me the most trouble. Back in 1972, I remember this one incident that made me look like I was walking a tightrope. Next, in 1998, I got caught on a flood. And finally, in 2002, I chuffed over the rickety old bridge, but it was worth it to save a flock of lambs, and all of those bridges were wooden. So, you got a problem with wooden bridges? Kinda ironic since you're 69 percent made out of wood. Right, but I'm just saying, wooden bridges may be okay, but I trust other bridges with a lot of different materials since they look a lot stronger and steadier than the ones I mainly cross on my line. Neville did feel a little better. Later on, he had to take a goods train to Croven's Gate. There were some fuel supplies, coal, sand for the sanders, and Rusty's fuel for the narrow-gauge engines. At first, he was making good time, 
but then he approached the Natford Iron Bridge. Okay, I can do this. I can do this. But as he crossed over, he heard some mild creaking. I, I can't, I can't do it, can't do it. Nope, nope, nope. So he had to take an alternate route once again. But then he ran into another problem. This time, he can't get over it. Literally, the suspension bridge was right in front of him and there were no other alternate routes. So the guard went away to call Sir Topham Hatt for him to fetch another engine. I'll help him. All right, but try to be back before four o'clock, understand? Derek agreed and he roared off. Derek eventually found Neville looking a little scared. Neville, there you are. Don't you remember anything Toby told you? I'm sorry, mate. I, I just... See, that's a bigger bridge, bigger than the one I crossed, and a deeper fall, and I just can't. I'm sorry. Well, maybe we can roll along the bridge together. But what if the bridge falls down anyway? If it does, then so be it. At least he crashed together trying. Neville decided to take Derek's word, and they crossed over the Sodor Suspension Bridge. Along the way, Derek and Neville were having a little chat. Neville was comfortable with Derek talking to him. He wasn't paying too much attention to all the bridges they crossed over. Neville even helped Derek out over Gordon's Hill. At last, just in time, Neville arrived at Crovin's Gate. He dropped off the remaining rolling stock at the wharf and met up with Sir Topham Head back at Crovin's Gate. He was having a honey bun from the refreshments coach. Oh! Neville! Derek has told me all about how you managed to get over bridges with his help. But I would like to ask, you think you can manage on your own? Well, it would take maybe a couple days for me to... Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it is up to you. You take your time. Oh, say, what's that railway staff wearing? Blimey! That's no railway staff. That's the escapist Brandon Dickerson. <laughs> He must have done something to Rebecca! Quickly! We have to make haste and chase after them! Sir Topham Hatt ran across the platform and onto Neville's cab. <laughs> Quickly, Neville! Follow that yellow engine! Uh, uh, wait, sir! How am I supposed to. Uh... Get me close to the brake van! There he goes! <gasps> Okay, here we go. I'm getting too old for this. You there! In case the train goes too fast, keep breaking! Neville tried to get close to Rebecca, but then he ran into a problem. Oh no! It was the Knapford Bridge again. How am I supposed to get over now without the assistance? Neville! Huh? There, he saw Derek and Toby. You can do it. So with some puffed up courage, Neville slowly crept along the bridge. Don't stop. You're almost there. At last, Neville made it across to the other side. The engines praised his courage, and the chase presumed. 
Oh. Hold tight, Rebecca. I'm almost there. Oh. Almost there. Huh. You there, Dickerson. Ah, Topham. <laughs> Surprised to see me. Dickerson, I don't know what you're up to, but I need you to stop this train now. Not until I derail this locomotive for request of judgment. Ow! Hey, I don't care! Get off this train! Ouch! Oh, so you want to play rough, huh? Okay, we're gonna play rough. Better up, you six-foot top-headed penguin! Yeah, well, huh? Back off! I'd say you back off! Uh, and let me awesome. Oh, come now. I want to see what's in that belly of yours. Stop. You'll have to get through me first. On guard. Yeah. Joyce, Perry. What's going on up there? Uh, yeah. Quite impressive skills. <laughs> it's over, Topham. I'm not going down without a final blow. <laughs> I would. Is this some kind of a joke? Yeah. We ought to get that low-hanging limb looked at. Right. Hold on, Rebecca. <sighs> oh, what, oh, I wish my grandfather was here. Um, right. Jonathan! Break! Break until the coupling snaps! And he did. And as for Rebecca, she braced for the derailment. Ha <laughs> ha! This is probably our biggest engine yet to derail. Yeah, I've seen bigger. But the front rolling stock closest to Rebecca were shaken and horrified. You horrid trucks! We were having fun with Rebecca! Wait, you're friends with this engine? Well, of course. She sings our songs. We were about to have some joy until you lot ruined it. Eventually... Help had arrived to save Rebecca. Engines and such as fans. The rabbit is all of a the opposite, opposite of several people. And I'm quite satisfied with my deal with him last month. Hmm. Eventually, all the rolling stock and Rebecca's tender were salvaged. However, Rebecca had to wait until four days later for Rocky to save her since Rocky had to get new cables for his arm. But as she was re-railed, something fluttered out of her cap. Sir Topham Hatt picked it up and noticed a paper that said, Derail Rebecca. Make them rebuild her tender or body. What is it, sir? I've seen this type of raw attempt before. Dickerson surely wouldn't have done something like this. This could only be the request from one man I had an issue with a while back. He goes by the name of Joseph Franklin. Then Sir Topham glanced over at the Tidmouth Penitentiary. I need a highly increased man search. And so it was done. But for now, I'm pleased to say that in future events with Neville, he has gotten over his fear with Bridges, all thanks to the help of his true friends.
got your tux ready for you, boys. Ah, uh, there'll be no need for disguises, my dear sidekick. For nearly everyone in the UK already knows who we are. Ah, Dickerson. Good to see you're still alive. Barely. My shoulder blade has been fractured from your last request. Your next one better be good. Easy, Brandon, easy. Our next scheme will be simple, yet our biggest one yet. And if this one doesn't make Sir Topham Hat change the ways of his railway, then I don't know what will. But as of now, I'm putting it on hold until next year, until the chaos dies down. Well, if you say so, Mr. Joseph Franklin. Hey! Ex nay on using me and Ian's real names. Just call us the Wreckers of Realism.